Welcome back to episode 24 of our Mekong Delta scooter trip in Vietnam. This one is also the last part of the three episode series of our journey to Phu Quoc Island, the most gorgeous beach destination and the only island city in Vietnam. To show you more of the beaches, in today's video, we're gonna go on another impromptu trip to hit up the south of the island. With everything unplanned and only decided at the last minute, we get to experience lots of amazing things in a unique way. From going snorkeling without bringing swimsuits, to discovering a newly developed European-inspired town used as a sunset lookout all by accident. Exactly, and it's each piece, like every corner you turn, is stunning. On top of that, we'll get to soak in the beauty of the beaches, whether it's at sunset or the best time of the day. Meaning, as long as you're here, don't worry about your itinerary. There's always something you can do to have lots of fun and special memories. This place seems to be pretty good. I am actually really enjoying this area. And if you've been enjoying our adventures in Vietnam, please support us by liking this video and subscribing to our channel to continue going around this beautiful country with us. Now, let's go explore the south of Phu Quoc Island. I was just asleep last night. Yeah, I slept pretty peacefully until you started moving around. Really? Yeah. It was a lot better with everything here, right? Mm, for sure, for sure. Like, it made it peaceful. So from our room, like from the balcony, you can see the breakfast buffet and pretty much every single table is full. I don't even know where we're gonna sit if we go down there. Oh, it looks like there's one table that's open. Okay, let's go. Let's hurry up before there's no tables left. More people wake up later. Early bird gets the worm. For our 10 day stay at this resort, we love that every breakfast buffet is always filled with lots of options to choose from. And since we always have work in the morning and can't get out, having breakfast all catered at a place like this is awesome. Oh, some Chinese and Vietnamese stuff here. Mm -hmm. Those are waffles and pancakes, I miss that. <laughs> Around noon, we're finally able to get going to the south and it's gonna take us around 30 minutes to get there. Okay. I can handle that because like I'm also starting to get hungry. I didn't eat as much as you did at breakfast. Mm. I, the main part of carbs that I had was just one slice of toast. So it didn't hold me that long. Too bad. <laughs> I couldn't tell you more about it. All right, well, that's fine. I'll be sure to eat a little bit better tomorrow then. All right, so now let's just pack everything up and let's get going. Well, everything's pretty much packed, so we can go right now. Okay, put the shoes on. Today we're wearing tennis shoes instead of flip-flops. <laughs> yeah. Nice and clean shoes, but somehow they managed to get wet on our trip here. Your shoes are so nice and clean too. Not for long. Oh yeah, they also have a hole in them now. One of my shoes, here. Yeah. yeah. I saw it. it makes me sad. Yeah. Remember, music. I was the one who washed it. Yeah, but then we blue dry it with the hair dryer. Look, to an extent. I'm glad we made that decision. Flip flops, just in case. Eh, we don't need to bring them. Why are we bringing them? Because you never know what we can do down there, right? To the south of the island. Maybe we can walk on the beach. Maybe the beach is like a lot better and clearer and we want to like actually immerse ourselves in the environment. All right, let's go. Let's go. The sky isn't the best today, but I don't think it's gonna rain cause our weather app said so. And since the road is super quiet, Mari wants to practice with the scooter a little bit more. I'm all good with that since she did pretty well on our trip to the north part, though the terrain up there was somewhat mountainous. Okay, so this is the break here, right? That's the break. We have another break here. The foot brake paddle is for the back wheel. And that one is for the front wheel. Don't go too fast and push this one, otherwise you flip it. You're gonna slip, right? Sideways. If you wanna break, use this one. Use that one first, very slowly and gently, okay? okay. And that one at the same time. Remember, the yeah. strongest gear is the first one. So I'm and go so when you are on the strongest gear, make sure that you just accelerate gently because the gas is pretty sensitive. And once the scooter has its own momentum, then you switch the gear to the second strongest. And you go for a few more meters before okay. switching it to the third. But that's how you go, oh. okay? Okay. All right, let's go. Okay, accelerate gently. Yeah. Good. Awesome. When you switch the gear, make sure that you release all of the gas. Yeah. All right, and then you switch, otherwise 
vehicle is going to be in trouble. You're going to flood the tank. Release. Switch. That's right. Water with the gas to pick up the perfect momentum. And then right, right now. Go. Like that. Very good. Just because both of our weights are a little bit up there or in the middle range, yeah. you go with the third gear or the fourth gear, it's fine when it's flat and there aren't many vehicles around, so you don't have to circumvent and slow down if oh. something appears just right in front of you. Yeah. I think riding the scooter is not that hard. Still, I'm very nervous when the road is busy. Now, we're going to the southern tip of Fukuok Island to go around Antoi Town. Looking like the tail end of a teardrop, this area has many pristine beaches located very close to one another. Amongst them, Shao Beach and Kem Beach are always the best in the region for tourism, drawing visitors to their crystal clear water and white sand that is perfect for relaxation and water sports. One amazing thing about Fukuok is that it's not a standalone island. In fact, the name Fukuok is used to refer only to its largest island but its total area still has 21 other islets and most of them are located in this southern area. That's why travelers flock to Antoi not only for snorkeling and diving to spectate the breathtaking coral reefs, but also for the opportunity to explore the untouched natural beauty of the surrounding islets. This is probably one of the reasons why they decided to build the longest cable car in the world here. This whole thing is almost 8 kilometers long, connecting three other islets to the island of Fuqua. But we won't ride it because we want to do something different. Something we don't even know yet. Probably looking at all of the names to see whatever sounds good. For now, let's stop by this restaurant to grab lunch first. Alright, Maddie. Yeah. We're gonna have some fried rice and then fried chicken drumsticks. Mm. Very tasty. Alright, I admit you chose the perfect lunch. Mr. Instructor. Right now, we're gonna go to some of the docks here to see how beautiful the sea is and the surrounding is. Now I have another question for you. How clear is the water gonna be? I think it's gonna be very clear and clean. Crystal clear. Oh really? I've been wanting to see that in the sea for the first time in a while. Ooh. So there's all the smaller rigs. Very cool. Oh, and the gondola's way over there. So I'm assuming these ones here are like tour boats, right? You see all the life jackets? Mm -hmm. Smaller fishing boats. The water is so calm today. Compared to what it was yesterday. Mm. Alright, so I just hooked up with another lady talking about how we can actually set up a tour <laughs> on a boat just between the two of us. We're gonna get to some aisles around this area and Maddie is gonna be able to dive into the sea in order to witness some coral reef around here. Really? Yeah. All right, so you mean dive like air tank or snorkel? Maybe snorkeling. And yeah, I didn't know we were gonna go diving, so I didn't bring my swimsuit. So now... We're gonna have to follow the lady that I just talked to in order to find some cheap hair. I mean, I'm gonna go one piece so I don't show my belly. But they didn't have any in my size, so I bought this pair of shorts yeah, instead like and used their washroom to change into it. All right, I guess this is fine. No bathing suit needed. I've always dreamed of seeing coral reef. And snorkeling, I, I, if it's diving, I don't think I can do it, but snorkeling, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, they got flip-flops here. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I put sunblock on this morning, but not in the places that are exposed now, so. Because I didn't expect this. I'm gonna be getting a nice tan. Even if I put sunscreen on, I'm gonna tan no matter what. I'll have to accept that. Along with motor boats like the one we're on, you can also rent a speedboat, which could be faster but more expensive for a boat tour here. Tours like this can get you to four different islands in the south with varying prices and you'll get the best deal when coming in a group. Not only do they know the best spots for snorkeling, they can also plot the places to fish. And later, you can have a little party on your boat enjoying your rewards if you rent a big one. And don't forget to bargain a little bit like I did. They originally wanted 1 million for the ride, but since we only wanted to go to two different islets or spots, I was able to lower the cost down to 750,000 dong. 
And this is the first island right next to Antoy Town. <laughs> oh, you are so friendly. The water is like crystal clear. Yeah, so I can swim? Yeah, you can swim here, but it, this is not the perfect spot for you to swim and yeah. snorkel. But it's a perfect place to dip your feet in. Yeah, change your shoes. Oh yeah, someone else decided to go for a little dip besides me. <laughs> is our escort gonna go for a dip too? He certainly is. There are so many rocks in this area. The rocks are kind of slimy too. It looks like a lot of garbage washed up on this part of the island though, which is pretty sad, but it is what it is. This part of the sea is pretty calm. It makes it feel nice and peaceful. After taking us here to check out the beach and the beautiful view of the surroundings, our boat lady continued to lead us to the best spot for Maddie to go snorkeling. You can see how happy and excited I am as this is my first experience getting to snorkel in the sea like this. My excitement convinced David that I was gonna have a lot of fun and he'd be happy about it no matter what. But somehow, when actually getting into the water, I freaked out so much that my body went stiff. Look at me, I'm now like a wood board floating at sea. After a little pep talk with David, I felt a lot better and started to enjoy the experience. And look at what I see down here. This is amazing for me to see lots of coral with some fish swimming around like this. Knowing I always wanted to do this, David bought this tour, but he himself wouldn't want to get off the boat with me because he's afraid of water and later he'll tell you more about it. All right, so are you done? I think so. My foot's cramping and I got a bad owie when I panicked at the beginning. You hit the rock or something? Yeah. Like, that's when I was holding onto the boat and uh -huh. I like, I didn't know what to do. And as I was kicking, like, my legs scraped the rock. That's what I get for panicking. I knew I shouldn't panic, but I couldn't help it. And then I swallowed a bunch of seawater at the same time when I hit that. I was like, what? <laughs> so a double whammy. You did good. Thanks. All right. I'm happy you enjoyed it. I, I really did. Thank you. <laughs> a bit of an interesting fact about our boat lady. She's been doing this for almost 15 years, but she can't swim. This is so odd, right? I guess she never has to swim as long as her boat manning skills are always impeccable. And that makes me the only person who can swim amongst the three of us. Our ride back isn't smooth, but thanks to her talent, we arrived safe and sound. How is it? Good, good, good? It's the spot right now. <laughs> like after all my panic, nervous energy, I needed something. So I think we have to cast all of the experience of diving to look at all of the beautiful coral reefs aside. Oh. Now let's just focus on how beautiful this whole thing is because I've never been to this place. Even though I spent probably more than 17 <laughs> years living on this island before. Oh wow. So oh. all of this is a new build, right? Yes. And was any of this like in the beginning stages of building while you were here? No, never. Wow. So they did this pretty quick. You were here for 17 years yeah. and none of this was here before. We found this place all by accident and this complex is called Sunset Town, inspired by Mediterranean architectural style. Nestled on the slopes along the southwestern shore of Fukuok Island, this place is considered the best spot to watch the sunset, offering visitors a unique and fascinating experience. There is this adorable little walkway or promenade right next to the beach overlooking Sunset Bridge. And it looks like there's a perfect spot to go swimming too. This place feels so peaceful. It's probably not chaotic yet because there's not a lot of people here as this place is still developing. But there's a lot of little hidden gems in here. There's a lot of little restaurants hidden here as well. When here, you can scoot through three main areas of the town, including the harbor, the apartment complex areas, and the central town, featuring nearly 60 iconic buildings. So much is like going on here that I feel like there's not enough time to adventure this place. Each piece, like every corner you turn, is stunning. Unfortunately, it's a bit quiet in our time here, but with its fantastic location and infrastructure, Sunset Town will be a big thing expected to reach its full capacity in the future and draw even more tourists to the southern tip of Fukuok Island.
two more years for everything to be mm -hmm. filled in a little bit more. Cheerleader, she is always right there when I need her. Copyrighted. <laughs> And since the Best Sunset spot wasn't open for tourism yet, we came here to Long Beach right next to our resort to soak in the natural beauty of the setting sun. Stand back, let me show you how to frolic. Whee! Frolicking! <laughs> Do what I did. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> Rolling. The next day, we arrived in the south again to check out some other spots. And the first one we'll visit is David's house, since I'm always curious about where he comes from, but the road isn't that nice. Oh, there used to be a soccer field in there. And I used to come here a lot to play soccer. And this is my village. From five years old up to 26. So 21 years being attached to this place. This right here is called International Intersection. Why was it called International Intersection? I have no idea. To think that the island has been developed a lot more, but this small little village has gotten way worse than how it used to be. I guess they only focus on the infrastructure that attracted tourists, not the one that upped the people's lives. Not to mention, the living cost here is quite high, explaining the existence of some poor-looking areas like this. It's really sad for me to see how dilapidated the place is now, but anyway, this is my house. Although we don't live here anymore, the property still gives me a sense of familiarity and nostalgia, so I decided to take Nadia around for a bit. Okay, is that the same military base your sisters took you to when you got a snake bite? Yeah, <laughs> because I was just way too eager and interested in picking the guavas. I didn't pay attention to the snake. It was just right, literally just right on my feet. And then it bit me and then the military guy just came up with like the idea of using a chicken and his butt to suck out like the, the venom of the snake. <laughs> and did the chicken butt get the venom out? No. Why? Because it wasn't a poisonous snake in the first place? It was venomous or I don't know. I don't remember. I can't recall because I was like probably six or seven around that time. But then I remember the chicken pooping on my feet. <laughs> After a little tour around the village, we came here to Kem Beach, one of the two most prominent beaches of the south. We could just go to the beach and swim, but we wanted to rent some gear and also a kayak to have fun in the water. Right now we are at one of those resorts that provide gym and spa. And we're now going into this reception building in order to purchase some ticket so that we can have that inclusive package that has a kayak for one person, um, two beds for both of us, and also that big umbrella just in case it's gonna rain. That sounds perfect. All right, all right. So we have a form here that we have to fill out. Okay. They gave each of us a paper bracelet, and David put it on me the wrong way. You twisted mine all up though, <laughs> and it's tight. Uh oh. The problem is it can't be undone, Sorry. so the staff yeah. came to help. She cut it and gave me a new one on the comfortable chair and watch the view. Wow, so this facility is really nice and up there. There's like a restaurant slash cafe area over here. You can bring your stuff out onto some of the outdoor furniture over here. There's so many like picnic benches and stuff. And I love the hammocks, love the hammocks. So some of the outdoor furniture. Oh, and they have a few showers set up. So these are the showers over here. So this thing, it's like fancy. They hired the head of it with the wicker and all that. This place seems to be pretty good. I am actually really enjoying this area. I'm glad that we came out this way. It was pretty unplanned to come out here, but I really like this area. It's right next to the sunset view, and there are quite a few visitors here, so that does mean that this is a really great swimming spot. I am liking this beach a lot because it is so much more calm with the water, and it looks like there's a few more activities that you're able to do compared to 
the resort we're staying at. So they have the kayaking, the banana boat, the sailing, whole bunch of stuff like that. But also, also, this beach seems a little bit more clean. So we have the basketball net right over there. There's a place to do volleyball and there are lifeguards standing around in a few places, which is nice, but just look at the water. So you've probably seen in a few of our other videos how the water looks at the beach or the resort we're staying at, but here it's so much more calm and clear. Ooh, it's warm too. Well, it's not warm warm, but it's warmer. Oh, it's nice. I am enjoying how clear the water is and I can't wait to do the kayaking on this water because it's pretty calm and I don't think I'm gonna flip the kayak. I've only been kayaking once before, but that was on a lake, so nothing near this, all right? The sand is so fine and then it's just like a bright white color. And then with the water being so clear, pristine. This beach is considered as one of the most beautiful beaches of the entire city, the island. So how are you enjoying our walk so far? It's not that sunny, it's not that hot. Everything looks so clean and respectful. A lot of tourists, a lot of like foreigners around and not a lot of like partying and drinking activities going on and that's what I like the most about this beach right now. Go as high as you can. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. You gotta be in sync. No, <laughs> forget that. I wanna go high and then jump up. Have you ever done that as a kid? No. You never jumped off a swing? <laughs> no, never. I was a naughty child. I'd go as high as I could, Ooh. jump off. Oh man, really? that's fun, yeah. The only thing that I ever jumped off was the bridge that almost killed me with that experience. That was the only terrible, really, really terrible experience that I had with water. And that stopped me from being able to swim or enjoying water in general. I see. He's just happy. He's like, I want to be here. I'm happy because you're here too. Okay, I have a funny story to tell you. So there's a story I read about a lady who took her dog to the lake. After the lake, the dog was acting so funny with its tail. And so she took the dog to the vet and the vet told her the dog injured its tail because it wagged it too much the day before because it had so much fun. So the dog strained its tail from wagging it way too much and too hard the day at the lake. Okay, and? That's it, the dog was so happy. Uh, the dog was so happy? Yeah, so happy it injured itself. So he wasn't cuckoo as a dog anymore when he got home and then he didn't chew anything up? Well, of course he didn't chew anything up, but he was just so cuckoo that he injured himself, he hurt himself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And finally, there comes our kayaking time. This is a lot more fun than I expected and the fact that the water is so calm makes paddling very easy too. This is it for our entire trip to Fukuok Island. I gotta tell you, for our 10 days here, we had a lot of fun and really hope you enjoyed all three of our episodes detailing how we got here, where we went, and what we did on this magnificent island. The place itself will continue to grow to serve as a paradise of pristine beaches in the world. So when your travels come, you'll love it here for sure. Now, in the next episode, we're going to head back to the mainland to visit the city of Hatian. 
Here, we'll try many different types of fruits and come here to a mountain cave to enjoy this beautiful view. And if you enjoyed this last episode to Fuqua, don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel to follow us around Vietnam. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.